Now let's get into this. Um, so, as you know, uh, the Blazes' Dave Rubin uh, blocked me uh, some time ago, and um, I don't know if that's the Blaze policy. I don't know if you are on the Blaze, you need to uh, block me. I doubt it. I can't imagine. I don't think I'm blocked by the Blaze owner, Glenn Beck. But um, once Dave Rubin went on the Blaze, he uh, blocked me. There are other people on the Blaze, like I say, they don't block me. And uh, in a bit of synergy, uh, the Blaze's Dave Rubin appeared on Fox's uh, Tucker Carlson show. And uh, because there's nothing a, uh, a uh, falsely aggrieved white guy likes more than another falsely aggrieved white guy. And so um, this is where the aggrievement meets. And of course, Dave lives in California. So they're bringing him on to talk about about these California wildfires. Now, everybody knows why we have these wildfires. It is because PG&E, the Pacific Gas and Electric Company, has hired too many people who are not white, as Dave helpfully explains to us. And he joins us tonight. So, <laughs> Dave, thanks so much for coming on. Um, you moved to California because it's a beautiful place. And, and I agree with that. You've seen it really degrade in the time that you've been there. But PG&E strikes me as, as almost second. a metaphor. I happen to know that the reason why Dave moved to uh, California was because uh, in New York, he just couldn't find work. Uh, as a comedian, I have been told this by multiple people, um, not just uh, other comedians, but uh, actually even writers, writers, uh, newspaper writers used to write for comedy, used to get emails from Dave every time he had a, twi a tweet that went viral back in the day. And uh, but uh, I, I digress. Now he's with the blaze. He's very successful. Continue. It's almost a metaphor for the destruction of the state. So here's the, 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 the power, the utility which doesn't really know anything about its own infrastructure, but knows everything about the race of its employees. How did we get there? It's just unbelievable. Look, I've been in L.A. I'm in L.A. right now. I live about a minute away from one of the big fires that's still going. I have friends that are evacuated. Los Angeles, putting politics aside in Southern California, might be the most beautiful part of the United States. Yes. The problem right now is that everything, everything from academia to public utilities to politics, everything that goes woke, that, that buys into this ridiculous progressive ideology that cares about what contractors are LGBT or how many black firemen we have or white this or Asian that, everything that goes that road eventually breaks down. It, it, it is not how freedom is supposed to operate. What is supposed to happen, Tucker, imagine if your house was on fire. Would you care what uh, the public utility or what the fire company, what contractor they brought in, what, what uh, gender or sexuality or any of those things he or she was? I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Who would care? And right now we've got, a, we've, got, well, we've got a situation of course you wouldn't care. And we've got a situation right now where they're literally, we're doing preemptive blackouts in this state, which I think is the 11th largest economy in the entire world. We do preemptive blackouts because they don't want to put too much power, uh, too much pressure on the grid. I mean, try to imagine the absurdity. Now, I, I'm trying to figure out where, how these two things are related. Is he <laughs> suggesting that uh, PG&E is so dominated by the black firemen or the LGBTQs or whatnot that they don't, that they're that they're they're the reason why there are blackouts. Like I like he's saying one thing. Like they're obsessed. Like they know the percentages of of how many LGBTQ employees they have or uh, or, or Latino um, employees they have. But they're not doing grids. So is the are we to believe that these two things that he's referring are related? In other yeah. words, is the reason why PG and E is not doing the proper um, maintenance on their lines and running it. Is it because there are people who are LGBTQ or Latino or black that are running these things? They have too many hormones. Let's let's they maybe maybe he'll wrap it up. Maybe he'll bring it together. Here we go. Time for the grand synthesis. 
much power, uh, too much pressure on the grid. I mean, try to imagine the absurdity of what's going on here. And uh, and I hate to tell you, but we just don't have enough uh, clear thinking, say, more libertarian or conservative minded people in California to fight what the progressives are doing to the state. But if you can't keep the lights on, and you can't keep the place from burning down. You've reached the point where there's no kind of lying about it anymore. Like, it's fallen apart. It's a disaster. It's not civilized anymore. You know what? If I've learned anything by living Pause in California. It. Not civilized anymore. That's an interesting choice of words. Mm. What an interesting civilized. rhetoric here. Yeah, it's a, civilized is a very interesting way of saying that we have a failed electrical grid. And that is... Not civilized. That's a, just a weird way of. I have a graph here that shows the correlation of Chicano studies departments with wildfires. <laughs> and a lot of people want you to focus on climate change, but I think if you look at this, I mean, the numbers are stunning. The whole thing's uh, crazy. No, oh, it's a biblical explanation for a natural disaster. Let's see what else he's got. Maybe we so, so uncivilized, these guys. Or in, uh, in Los Angeles specifically, uh, it's that no matter what happens, Ideology seems to trump rationality. Yes. So yes. in the six years that I've been here, the amount of homeless encampments have expanded. Virtually every exit you get off the 405 or the 101, there are now homeless people sitting right there or, or actually that have basically built structures at the exits. Now it's like if, if raising taxes on everybody and supposedly the progressive policies that care about poor people, if these things worked, wouldn't the places uh, that progressive policies were enacted, wouldn't there be less homeless? Wouldn't there be less uh, gun violence? All the things Good that they point. talk about, but no, there's always more. Uh, this is not a coincidence. These policies don't work. But there, if you just don't really think about them, if you think, oh, we just have to throw money at things, throw money at things, and they magically get better, while you do whatever you want to do in your life and don't want to really think about the issues, then it all works. And that's what we all have to fight. I mean, everyone across the country, because, you know, I travel the country often and people will say to me, Dave, Dave, you got to stop the people from California moving here to Utah or moving here to Denver yeah, uh, or moving here to Texas, because then right. they bring the, the bad policies of California elsewhere. Build yeah. a wall. But, you know, walls are not just for our exterior borders, but that's just, you know, something to think about. Um, okay. What? Because then what happens is people move to other now, places, but the places where they're liberal, the bad things are happening because they're trans. So the whole thing just really doesn't make any sense. But that's the situation we're in here yeah, today. I am what quite, policies is he talking about here? I am quite sure if PG&E, I want to stay on PG&E because this is the, they're, they're playing footage of thousands upon thousands of acres burning. Um, we could even lose the Reagan Library, ladies and gentlemen. There's a B-side of me doing We Are the World with the N-word in it. And <laughs> the idea that if PG&E, as he says, like, you know, throw money at it, throw money at it. The idea that if PG&E threw money at restoring and rebuilding the infrastructure in making sure that trees are not overhanging the, uh, the, the power lines or maybe burying some of the power lines in some, some very um, tenuous areas. The idea that doing this wouldn't help is absurd. I mean, this is a guy who's all about ideas and intellectualism Yet, he doesn't even raise up the fact that over the past five years, PG&E has thrown off $4.5 billion, billion to its shareholders. And when, when Dave was questioned on this absurdity on Twitter, he linked to this opinion piece. People were questioning his opinion, and he defended it with somebody else's opinion <laughs> from the Wall Street Journal talking about stakeholder capitalism in action. By the left's lights, PG&E is a perfect corporate citizen. Uh, liberal California Pauls attack it anyway. So in other words, despite the fact that I say that they think PG&E is a perfect corporate citizen, they're still attacked anyways. So that sort of leaves a question. Well, then why would they do that? Now, she doesn't answer that question. Alyssa Finley of the Wall Street Journal, Fox-owned Wall Street Journal, um, editorial board. She says PG&E exemplifies the lake's left's stakeholder model. 
according to which businesses are accountable not only to their shareholders, but to their workers, the environment, and local communities, and society at large. In practice, it means businesses exist to serve their political overlords. Now, the idea that PG&E exemplifies the uh, stakeholder model, and they're not accountable to their shareholders, $4.5 billion over the past five years, a billion dollars a year, practically, given to their shareholders, as opposed to be put back into developing the infrastructure. And, you know, we see this with electric companies all across the country. When I lived upstate, everybody said after Niagara Mo Mohawk sold out to um, National Grid, nobody came, nobody came by anymore to cut down the trees that were threatening the wires until the wires fell because it was just cheaper for them to do it that way. But who pays for that? Well, everybody who loses power pays for it because they can't go to work or they, they, had, they have to throw out their food or they have to figure out another way of creating heat for themselves. This is a perfect example of privatizing the profits and socializing the costs. Now, her argument is that... Um, Somehow they're getting um, the state law requiring them to get renewable uh, sources of energy by 2030 is she just throws it in there. It doesn't quite the, the line drawn it's just like what Dave Rubin did. The line drawn between their premise that this is all about the fact that they have 43.9 uh, percent of their employees belonging to ethnic minorities and there's fires. So ipso facto, those two must be related. But we don't quite see the line. They have detailed record, records on um, who, their, um, who their employees are, I guess. But that doesn't prohibit them from getting detailed records on their transmission towers and wires. There's a reason why they don't do that. Because they don't want to make it public how much they are not investing in their infrastructure. Which is why what we should be doing is taking this company and either have it be owned by the state or owned by the federal government. There is no reason why we need this company to be private and pay out $4.5 billion in dividends to its shareholders. We could take those $4.5 billion and put them into the infrastructure and make it incredibly safe. And therefore, the state doesn't have to pay for the firemen, even though half of them apparently are, are prisoners getting a buck a day or something. And so that people don't have to lose their homes and insurance rates don't have to go up. I mean, this is not to mention, obviously, in a heightened environment for fires because of climate change. But this isn't going away. And so the bottom line is looking forward, do you want to pay out to shareholders all the money that should be going into building infrastructure or do you want to continue this until it just gets un completely untenable where you have multiple weeks of blackouts? Now, Dave Rubin can blame the fact that it's LGBTQ hiring and PG LGBTQ. It, it sounds like he thinks PG and E is responsible for hiring all the firefighters, right? And there's just like a big long line of PG and E uh, set out a directive waiting to fight the fires, and PG and E is like, no, 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 we have to wait for a disabled Latina to walk up. PG and E exactly. sent out a directive from the top to the stakeholder model because that's what the left likes to say that only transgender disabled people can fight the fires and they might be nice people i mean look i'm married to a guy but i don't think they have the mobility look at the data that she cites stakeholders those are in quotes were mentioned 13 times in pg and e's 2018 shareholder report compared with three times in 2014 and zero in 2011 now it really begs the question what's going on in 2012 and 2013 and 2015 and 16 uh, but I have a feeling that that contravenes her, her point. But I don't even know what the point is. Like, as if the words, putting the word stakeholder in your annual report and somehow prevents you from actually investing. I mean, this is such Bush League uh, distraction from the main point that's here that it's 
it would be stunning if uh, Dave Rubin wasn't involved with it. I mean, honestly, it's like, who, who can we get to actually come on and say this stuff in public? You now, want to talk about the apocalyptic forest fires consuming the most important state in the country? I got you covered. It's the gay people. And by the way, I have a husband. Th that's the other thing. <laughs> Apparently, somebody said something to him like, this is a little bit uh, uh, racist of you and bigoted. Because, of course, like you are somehow implying that if we hire 48% of our employees are uh, so-called ethnic minorities... Um, if we do that, then we're, it's going to lead to this type of stuff. And here's, uh, here is, uh, Dave Rubin. Now he's uh, blocked me on Twitter. And so, uh, I had to take a screenshot. Uh, but, uh, this is Dave Rubin saying, hi, Anna Navarro. Nothing I said was racist or homophobic. <laughs> Actually, That's a great way to begin a sentence. Right. Hi, Anna Navarro. Nothing I said was racist or homophobic. And where's the proof? Where's the proof? From this guy who believes that identity politics are ruining everything? Here's the proof. Actually, not that it matters, but I'm married to a man. Seems like it matters a little to him. Apparently, it does matter in this argument. For whatever reason, he seems to think. Uh, it has, and I'm then, gay. I call take back. And then here's a piece in the Wall Street Journal on how wokeness is affecting P, G, and E. Um, he wrote P, S, and G in California because white men are so competent. Um, it, is, it is not a piece which uh, explains how wokeness, it's an opinion that there shouldn't be wokeness there, but there is absolutely no, because of this, that, you know at what's all super involved super woke? This. Prison slave labor. That's super woke. And he just says, have a great day. And then, of course, he goes on to beg um, Judd Apatow to come on his show because they went to high school together. We share an identity in that we went to high school together. Do you want to, uh, do you want to have me on? Um, That's so sad. Yeah. Unbelievable. So uh, there it is. Dave Rubin. Judd Apatow is not open to her ideas. And by the way, Jed. I'm actually married to a man. So not that it matters. Not that well, it matters. But the funny thing is, is that, again, how does he argue that Judd should come on his show? By their shared identity. We went to the same high school together. I'm surrounded by standpoint epistemology. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get outside of my own viewpoint. All I can do is filter it through my own experience, which Folks, is an intense desire to get paid. feedback loops interrupted. <laughs> Folks.